you basically sort of have three pots of money. You have your investment assets. You typically would have your home or homes, which are not liquid assets and also not generating cash flow. And then you have, say, you may have an insurance program. So you've got those three pots of money. When the event occurs, the whole point is which of those pots of money do you want to turn into cash? So it might be more comforting to know because in any event, you're, you are going to leave a smaller estate than if the event had not happened. You're spending money, so it's going to happen. But what might be a choice is to say, I'd rather preserve my liquid portion of investment capital and draw down on the equity of my house, draw down on the equity of my insurance policy, because that's not a material impact on my lifestyle and also leaves me with the security of that pot of investment capital. The issue of the caregiver is simply that the caregiver isn't given <clears throat> typically the kind of trustee powers we're talking about here. So logically, if you don't want your children involved in the care, you certainly would give them maybe through power of attorney the, the, the authority uh, that you would otherwise be exercising. But at least they're going to have your interest at heart. But the actual work is being done by somebody else who's paid professionally to get it done. And that's probably the best combination on the financial and the, and the uh, caregiver side.